<laughs> Got the old chucker out here, and I'm scrubbing it with hoppies, number nine. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, get some of these uh, tougher areas here. I don't think it's uh, gotten any more rust since I got this thing. It it had been sitting out on a dock, a covered dock for I don't know how long, maybe uh, a couple, three years. And uh, I think this machine is going to be okay. The last time I worked on it, I didn't have the hoppies. Got the brass brush. gloves on that hoppy stays with you a while. I'll take this loose and uh, wipe some of this off and have a look at it. There we go. This rust here will fade out just like the other machines. Now, the bed on these is uh, steel, so the rust is a little different. Rust is a little harder on steel. But I think overall this is okay. Need to scrub the top of that turret. We'll have a look here. Yeah. You can see it sat for a long time that that's the pattern of the oil path in there and it's acid etched from the uh, whey oil it has a lot of sulfur in it so when something sits a long time something's keeping the carriage from moving back I'll wipe this off I'm going to uh, oil this up real good again and I'll park it against the truck over here for now. But it's good to go over these things and see it's cleaning up pretty nice. Yeah, real good. Now, this, uh, the company that had this, um, used it until um, um, the belts broke on it. Then they replaced it with a CNC machine. I, I don't know what they were making with it. But it had a pot chuck on it. So it didn't, uh, the, fi the regular 5C collets, uh, there's not a lot of wear. Let me rotate that. Yeah, those uh, little lines are very faint. They can get quite deep. So the spindle nose is quite good. Um, there's quite a bit of wear here that I detected just moving the carriage and <laughs> jiggling the yaw out of it. But uh, I can use extension tool holders here. I got them up to like four inches and um, keep it back uh, from the real worn spot they uh, whatever they were doing was way up here you can see right here was you know the lines that they were using it at so it's looking pretty good 
hard inch HC chucker. I got that old Johnson slit up there. I'm gonna get that restored too. Those are good old saws. Real clunky, but they're good. Now look around the back side. There's my coffee. Yeah, I'll scrub the back side here too. Looking good. I'm glad I got this. Uh, it was uh, basically a rescue. Um, the guy tried to sell it, but nobody would buy it. And I think it was even at an auction and nobody bid on it. <laughs> so, it, it depends where you are, but uh, so chuckers, uh, I wouldn't pay a whole lot of money for one. Sometimes they want a bunch for them. It would have to be in really good condition. That's what I'd say. Okay, I'm still dealing with this in here. I'm going to really uh, start working on this tomorrow. And uh, start getting stuff out of here. Maybe tonight I'll start cleaning stuff out and moving it out. All the little things. <laughs> then I can scoot the machines around. And uh, it, there's a lot of difficulty in doing it in such a, a short space. But the distances that I'm moving the machines isn't very far either. You know, like this milling machine is going to move just about 10 feet. <laughs> very slowly and uh, the jig board is going to move over oh, about six feet and uh, then I got to juggle this other stuff around and uh, I don't know somehow spit machines out the door and uh, then bring some more in <laughs> a lot of fun anyway yeah so that's the survey here you can see how much more room I have here just totally amazing how much three feet that's just about three feet I slid the truck over over that way I can even spin that uh, trucker around on a pallet jack so you see these cracks like this this really bad concrete here I'm gonna have to go over that with a grinder and there's a spot here that's raised up Right here. I'll have to grind that seam smooth, make it easier to uh, get the uh, axles in through here. I think I have just enough room to do it. Now, I'm going to have this thing, oh, they had it strapped to the skid. And uh, I'm going to uh, lag bolt it and then uh, use the cable come, come along or two to hold it down. And I want to leave it on the skid because uh, these uh, axles and uh, a lot of lathes like this are, are pretty top heavy. So, um, the door's 48 inches wide, and uh, I, I uh, shortened the skid six inches, or made it narrower. So it was 48 inches, so it'll be a lot easier to get through. But it's still wide enough to keep the lathe from tipping over, moving it. We're going to have a pallet jack under each end. So that's the plan with that. And it should go pretty smooth. Hopefully I don't have to move that radio drill at all. For right now. Oh, I'll tell you. I'm going to knock it off pretty soon. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I got a few more days of this to go. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, just going to do a little shuffle. Okay, you guys have a good day. I'll check in tomorrow. Hey, back here on this turret. It's uh, 
working really good. I didn't think it worked this good. Get that hoppies in there, right? Oh, that's gonna clean up real nice. Okay, I'll show you this how this works. So you pull the lever down, it's got a little uh, arm, like a ratchet arm, that indexes it. Then this comes back and locks it on this uh, screw here. Then you can adjust the screw a little bit and true up the front of each uh, face. Eight faces on this. See how that works? Then you pull it back to there. Then you can index it by hand if you want to skip a tool. But you can't turn it backwards. The little paw catches it. If you want to go to uh, number seven, flip it over to number seven like that. And, well, when do I? No, I'm all right. Yeah, locked in the number seven. And that really locks it tight, just wedges it in with those two fingers onto this adjustable screw. Nice design, I think. Of course, Hard Inch uh, has uh, made a chucker way, way back. Early 1900s, maybe even late 1800s. <laughs> they had a very early version of this. I've only seen pictures of it. But they made some changes through the years on these. But I, I don't know much. Uh, I think this is one of the later versions here. They kind of made the cabinet a little more square on the corners. But I don't think they changed it. I remember the last production run was in the 1990s, late 1990s, and I think the price was just under 60000 for a new one now. Very expensive. Of course, it's obsolete now because it takes a person to run it. <laughs> Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let me wipe that off. I think it's just going to get real shiny. And the sun's coming out a little bit. I'm going to have to button this up. It's going to rain. Yeah, that, see, this is going to clean up real nice, I think. Just like that. Looks like they're cutting some 4140. Last time they're using those. Yeah, that's looking real good. That Hoppies does a good job on, on rust and crud. Of course, what it's intended for is expensive items. This is an expensive item. <laughs> yeah, I'm just about out of that little tray of this uh, hoppies. Yeah. Let this soak a little bit and wipe it off. I think this is going to clean up and be a 
big big little machine. I want to use it for making a lot of small parts for my uh, steam models. I've got a um, an inch and a half uh, to the foot scale um, Allen models, ten wheeler locomotive. And there's the actual locomotive over uh, uh, in the park in Pasco. So I got the uh, prototype to look at. I, I really want to complete that project, at least the the chassis part. So I'm gonna I'm gonna concentrate on that too. I just got so much to do. Okay, I'm gonna oil up this machine and uh, call it a day.